Short questions, short answers by Tor teacher Ariel and eBible. They bring the questions and I bring the answers, and together we arrive at some conclusions. Here's our question on the table for tonight. What made some animals clean and others unclean? Yeah, let's continue talking about what we talked about last week, okay? FYI, this current answer is really a follow-up answer to last week's topic. You can also watch my lengthier answer to a similar topical question at this YouTube video link. Upper right corner, I'm gonna add a little link to last or to a previous study that I did that's gonna help you understand. Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14 are key passages in outlining to the people of God which animals are permitted for food and which are not. And we're actually going to exegete chapter 11 in the longer study uh, tonight. A good way to interpret the Leviticus and Deuteronomy texts is to affirm that God created certain animals intrinsically tame, that is unclean, and others intrinsically tahor, that is clean. What do I mean by those terms? Well, we'll explain it a little later, but for now, we're talking about something in the design that God uh, used when he created animals. These terms are not defects in the animals themselves. Rather, this speaks of the superior intellect of a creator that is in control over the ecosystem that he created. So he created all the living things to work together, to function with one another. And I like to think that God designed both clean and unclean animals to play their own unique roles in keeping his creation running smoothly as a collective whole. You understand what I mean? We're going to look at some examples here just briefly and get just slightly scientific. A variety of water-dwelling creatures, for example, function as cleaners in that they help keep other water-dwelling organisms free of infections around wounds or harmful parasites, etc. Right? Isn't that a really neat feature that God built into his own ecosystem to have uh, animals helping one another? Also, uh, we can observe that some land-dwelling creatures eat carrion, thus helping to recycle nitrogen and carbon in animal remains, right, from animals that die naturally. Naturally, Obviously, I'm describing types of biological biological symbiosis, right, where where the animals are working together with one another. And if we think about removing animals, then we upset the that equation. So even if we argue against this logic based on our lack of understanding, then we can't argue that God told Noah to gather two of each kind of every unclean animal into the ark, while also commanding him to collect seven couples of the clean animals. Right? That's an interesting feature. Let's read the verse here. Adonai said to Noach, Come into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone in this generation are righteous before me. Of every clean animal, you are to take seven couples, and of the animals that are not clean, one couple. You guys read that? Yeah, that's interesting. Sometimes we skip over those particular features. It goes on to say, also of the birds in the air take seven couples in order to preserve their species throughout the earth. That's Genesis 7, 1 through 3, as rendered from the CJB, David Stern's version. So it appears to be that clean and unclean then do not seem to be limited to the Torah that Moshe handed down. After all, Noah lived thousands of years prior to any written Torah that we know of, right? So we're reading about clean and unclean, and yet how did Noah know? Well, I think we can provide some answer. God knew which animals were clean and which were unclean. Why? Because he made them that way. And he obviously endowed Noah with a way to tell. We don't know how, but uh, we, we do know. And all of this was long before he told Moshe to pen Leviticus and Deuteronomy. So God knew, God told Noah. We didn't see how God told Noah, but somehow he told him. And thus Noah knew how to carry out the instructions that God gave him, even though we don't have it in the text as to how Noah was able to do that. Okay. All right, that's my short study. Check out my podcasts, which are available on iTunes. You can search for me in the store under the search term Ariel Hanavi. But if you prefer to watch your theology, check out my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell for notifications. New content is added weekly or even daily.